Anybody interested in the uh, baseball playoffs? Anyone? Anyone? Yes. You are? Yeah, I just like the Dodgers because they're real good. All right. Yeah. I was going to ask who you're rooting for, but now we know. <laughs> Show A, Mookie, I got to go for the Dodgers. Jimmy, rooting for the uh, baseball playoffs at all? You watching? I haven't been watching it. Well, it started, I, I mean, just like a half hour ago. So No, I know, but like I just haven't been watching it. Right, because it started a half hour ago was my point. You could like you couldn't have been watching it because it started a half hour ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but say there are like tiebreakers like yesterday. Yesterday there were tiebreakers, but now the playoffs are underway as of about a half hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> In a van down by the river. <laughs> Dale, dale, dale. God bless. Dale. Dale. Thank you, Jimmy. You're welcome, man. Paul Maurice, for the love of God, save us. Save us, Paul Maurice. Save us. I think it's a week from tonight, right? Panthers open a week from tonight. I think we're going to do the show at uh, Amarant Bank Arena. Oh, I like it. How about that? You ready that's for a, hockey that's season? Our I'm with yeah. Jimmy, though. The heat, the heat seem like they're a little, you know, I'm sorry, Salon, I don't have the guts, but they don't seem like they're going to compete. The Dolphins are terrible. Come on, damn Paul Maurice. I just feel like the heat, my point with the heat was they're, they're just kind of, I think they're like a middling team, which is fine. Like, but I, I don't, I mean. It's not fine when you've set the standard that the heat have set. Right. But it, their hands were tied. Like, they, there was, like, they couldn't get anyone. Like, I'm, I'm you know, that. I, it, it's my point with the Dolphins, too. I thought the Dolphins did a good job putting this roster together. I, yeah. again, have the luxury of not being held accountable for the team because I didn't put it together. But I love Tua, still do. Mm -hmm. I'm getting on shaky ground with Mike McDaniel. He's annoying me more than anything. <laughs> He's just annoying me. Huck. You remember, it, it was literally 24 hours because we were on until 3.30. I'm saying Mike McDaniel is going to figure this thing out. He's going to put something together for Tyler Huntley and put some points on the board. I swung in a day. That was embarrassing. Nobody knew what was going on. Reminded me, you know, when I was a new father, took David, uh, my son, for a flight. We were flying somewhere, and it was like, you know, three-hour flight. And David, I don't know, must have been a year old. And he's crying, but I'm stubborn. And I'm telling him, hey, you know, in the meantime, he's bothering the entire plane. But I'm like, yeah, he won't stop crying. And, and so I'm just like, hey, stop. And a flight attendant comes over and she's like, perhaps you should, you know, let him have a, a cookie or something like I'll let me let me go get some cookies or something that he can, you know, gum on or whatever. And I'm like, no, nothing's going to work. I was just stubborn. I'm like, no, nothing's going to work. She's like, well, maybe I should try. Because she was trying to help out all the other passengers who were being annoyed. And she comes over and she gives him a cookie and he's quiet the rest of the flight. But I was just, I was stubborn guy. And that's how I felt every time they whistled an illegal shift last night. I would look at the guy with the crying baby and go, hey, maybe put a pacifier in his mouth. Like, do something. And and Nothing. Everybody's running around like crazy people. And then he's just snapping the ball and another flag's coming out. Give him a cookie on one. Cookie on one. Ready? It was that's sad. on Mike McDaniel. That's on Mike McDaniels. That's why he was annoying me yesterday. And there's no way that that looked good at practice. There's no way that what we saw, the embarrassment of what we saw, that you went through three days of practice and said, okay, we got something. Because there was no – I even said it. I expected them to be about two or three drives that they put together, throw a couple points up, get to 24, maybe 21, and let's see what happens. There was no sustained drives. They had 184 yards of total offense. That's sad. And, and like 30 him. of it, it's like 30 of those yards came at the end when uh, um, Tennessee stopped playing defense because there was like 20 seconds on the clock and they're still running plays to get some yardage in there. Yeah, he's still That's looking at his little sheet. Put the sheet away. Yeah. And I like the fact, though, that he doesn't cover his mouth because no one no one is interested in what he's calling because no one's going to call that crap. <laughs> the first drive, 
started out really well. And then Tyreek Hill fumbled. He didn't catch the ball. But Orlovsky and and the, the ESPN broadcast, the first play of the game was like a slant route right down the middle of the field to Jalen Waddle. And then they never threw the ball again. Did you did, did you guys see the stat at the end of the second quarter? They had highlighted it on ESPN. After the first reception, the first play of offense from the Dolphins, which was, I think, a 17-yard completion, something like that, Tyler Huntley had like seven more completions for negative three <laughs> yards after that play. Because mm-hmm. they did. Orlovsky did point it out when they made that first pass to Waddle. He's like, see, that's where Tua eats. Like, they're, they're doing that. Like, Tua eats on that. They never did it again. I'm going to tell you a secret. When all the defensive backs are standing on the line of scrimmage, those damn screens are not going to work. They're sitting there baiting you to throw one of those screens. We just kept throwing those little bubble screens, the little tunnel screens coming back inside. Hmm. You see what Devon Achan's numbers were at the end of the game? Do you know what his stat line is? <laughs> 10 for 15. <laughs> That's almost impossible. <laughs> 10 for 15? That's on, almost man. impossible. That's why I say, huh, it got to a point where whenever I would quarterback sneak it, you'll get three. A-Tan's getting one and a half, quarterback sneak it for four. See what happens. Tush push. Tush push four times in a row. See if you can get 10 yards. Ay, well, in better news, so the Panthers will start next week. We're going to do the show out there Tuesday. Then Wednesday, we'll do the show at Smoke on the Water. It's the uh, big Whiskey Stars and Cigars event. That is a week from tomorrow, Wednesday, October 9th. It's presented by Edmore Sawgrass Auto Mall. Come out, enjoy fine whiskey, a good cigar, fun night with everyone from QAM, and it's free to attend, but you have to RSVP at WQAM.com. That'll get you an invite and a complimentary cigar. Must be over 21, by the way. Drink responsibly. But uh, then you come hang out with us, Whiskey Stars and Cigars, week from tomorrow, Wednesday, October 9th, at Smoke on the Water in Weston. It's presented by Edmore Sawgrass Auto Mall and by official partner, The Main Man. There's nobody better to help you flip your biz and cash out big than the main man. Check it out at themainman.com and sponsored by the injury law firm Cohen and Judah, where a partner handles every single case. Call 866-FAIR-FEE. Let's get headlines here for the three o'clock hour with Alejandro Solana, brought to you by Doral Volkswagen. At Doral Volkswagen, choose from over 300 new Volkswagen models in stock, like the Tiguan, Taos, and Atlas. And remember, when it comes to Volkswagen, the great deals are at Doral Volkswagen. The Panthers actually played a preseason game yesterday. They did lose to the Lightning. They play again against Tampa Bay tomorrow at 7 p.m. They finish off their preseason slate Saturday. They'll play the Kings. That's a 7 p.m. puck drop. And you're right, Hawk. One week from today, next Tuesday, Panthers, Bruins, as you just mentioned, at the Amrit Bank Arena. The final score yesterday, Dolphins 12, Tennessee 31. (laughs) Dolphins 12, 12. (laughs) (laughs) That's sad. (laughs) David Furonas tweets out, the Dolphins rank last in scoring offense, 26th in total offense, 25th in third down success rate, 24th in rushing offense, and 23rd in passing offense. My guess is they're 23rd in passing offense because Tua had more passing yards week one. It was over 300 yards in week one. The Jacksonville Jaguars is the only quarterback in week one that had over 300 That's yards, right. yeah. and he's thrown now for more yards in week one than the Dolphins have passing yards in the last two games. Wow. It's a combination of preparation and and coaching. And he personnel. To, and I'm personnel. Saying, the personnel preparation. Let me get – because have somebody that can hold it down, but also coach them up knowing that Tua could go down. Like, it's sad. It's sad. Yesterday on Game Day Uncensored, I stripped McDaniel from a guru title, offensive guru mm. title. I stripped him from And it. you don't do that lightly because uh, I've known you for years. No, I'm saying you take that seriously. I do. If you're going mean, to strip someone of the title guru, 
it's going to be well thought out. So what Absolutely. is he now? I don't know. And oh, you I, didn't I, bestow a new title on him. I didn't. I did not bestow a new title right. on him. I'm willing uh, to to let you guys kind of workshop that out with me. But you know how you know uh, a, a a hockey player has the the C sure. for captain. Mm-hmm. They do something wrong. You go. You just strip. You just rip it right off their jersey. Hey, no. Well, guru title gone from Mike McDaniel. You can't have three straight weeks of a putrid offense and claim to be an offensive guru. Right now, I go optimist flag football coach. Optimist flag football coach. Wordy. Guru is four four letters. (laughs) Offs. Offs. Maybe like acronym. we're not looking for an, uh, an acronym. We're okay. we're just like a title, some sort oh. of title. Or oh, just a guy. He's an offensive guy. A jag, just a guy. No acronym. Sorry. Yeah, you're doing the thing. I don't know. Just a guy. Just a guy. Hey, you've seen uh, Mike McDaniel. He's the offensive guy. <laughs> guy. <laughs> it doesn't come with a lot of you know responsibility. Yeah. Uh, guy. <laughs> He's not even coordinating anymore. Just a guy. Just a guy. You know, the offensive guy, the head coach, the offensive guy. Yeah. Right? That, that, I mean, that, that's like now you don't have any expectations. Yeah. Offensive guru. Uh, you're expecting mm. to see stuff. Dry erase board. Waggle play. Something. Wildcat. Next week. In New England, in Foxborough. A little throwback. A little tip of the cap to Tony Sperano, the original guy. Did you watch the offensive line get HM 1.5 per carry? (laughs) Now y'all want to load up and run the Wildcat? Even Jarvis Landry saw his stat line and was like, oof. And this from uh, Kyle Krabs, to your point, Crowder, about the defense. You can't blame this on the defense. The Dolphins conceded 31 points last night. 24 of them came on possessions in which the Dolphins' defense yielded 27 yards or less. It's, listen, that, what was it, 2008 Steelers, 2000 Ravens, 2002 Bucks. Uh, defenses can't do that. 85 Bears. Defenses can't do that anymore. You're not holding nobody to six points a game any longer. Or it has to be like the greatest defense ever in the NFL. Like they have a good defense, but yes. this this isn't like a record setting defense. No. The four defenses I just said are argue or you can you you could argue them, but they're the four top defenses yep. ever in the NFL history. This no, I'm not saying they're anywhere close to that, but Every time they get the ball, we're almost in the red zone. <laughs> what? It's curtains for us. Kind of disrespecting the purple people eaters. I mean, those guys dominated in the mid 60s. Good call by you. I don't know. Well, the steel curtain as well. Yeah, that was a good nickname. What about the Dolphins? Didn't they have uh, with like killer bees? Camper? Killer bees, yeah. yeah. Killer bees can go too. Yeah. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, the Dolphins are going to play Monday, or excuse me, Sunday, one p.m. in New England. You said the Patriots are one point favorites. One point game. favorites. Yeah. There was no yeah. black killer bees. No, who was it? Bo Camper and Brudzinski. There was other ones, like two more, but there was black guys on the defense, but the the bee names. Like any other black. Looking it up here, the Dolphins defense became known as the Killer Bees because of the number of players whose last name began with the letter B. Bill Barnett, Bob Baumhauer, Lyle Blackwood. (laughs) Yeah, he might be black. Kimbo Camper and Bob Brodzinski. Lyle Blackwood White. He is? So the killer, no black killer bees. Because mm. your, your father's name was Lyle. That's right. No. Hmm. Disrespectful. Yeah. 